we doing today? What adventure are we going on today? Well, it's not really an adventure. It's more of a maintenance um, prevention on the load right trailer that the Yamaha is sitting on. We are going to do a little PM here, boys and girls. And specifically, we're going to do a wheel bearing rebuild on this load right. So follow along. I think everybody's been looking for it, and uh, it's time to do it. So what do we need our subscribers to do, babe? Uh, watch and subscribe. And subscribe. Yeah. And Don't be that guy. Don't be that guy that watches and moves on. Give us that subscription, please. And you can see all of our summer shenanigans. Shenanigans? Shenanigans. We have some shenanigans. There's definitely some shenanigans. So <laughs> yeah. Anyway, follow along, guys. Let's do this uh, PM on this trailer, and uh, it keeps us from leaving our machines on the side of the road in the middle of the summertime. Wouldn't that be awful? Oh, God. Could you imagine would... driving away, looking in the rearview mirror, and there's your trailer, there's your ski sitting on the side of the highway because we didn't do our preventative maintenance. So Yeah. That Again. would suck. It would suck. Yeah. So follow along. This is going to be fun. Well, for me, not for her. Yeah, it's all good. All right. So here we are. We have the spread of tools here for the for this job on hand. So number one thing is we have our Tim Morton's coffee. And if it was after 12 o'clock, it would probably be a beer. Or a whiskey. Or a whiskey, maybe. So what we have here, guys, girls, guys, girls, is we have a, a seal driver kit. Um, not everybody has a seal driver kit. I get that. Amazon for like 30 bucks. They're cheap. You know, you have them forever, but you can Mickey Mouse back seal in. Um, we got some vice grips, some snips, and then we, we have some um, needle nose pliers to get this done. And we have a kit. Um, I did the other side of the trailer the other day, and we pulled the bearings and the seals out, and we took them down to our local trailer supply place here in London, and they matched up the bearings and the seals. So in the kit, we have a new dust cap. Sometimes they get they're tough to get off, so you mangle them. But um, so there's a new dust cap. Oh, there's a new crown nut. Can you guess, honey, why that's called a crown nut? Because it looks like a crown. It looks like a crown. So we have a crown nut. We have a rear grease seal. I'll explain more about that when we get the hub off. And we got one and two, an inner and an outer wheel bearing. Usually they're the same bearing, the inner outer, and then we have two wheel or bearing races. So. That kit's about $35. Oh, and we got a cotter pin. That kit's about $35 here in London, Ontario. So um, always have one of these. Figure out what bearing you need and always have one on hand. But if you do your PMs, you, you'll never get caught without. So hold on. So now we got this wheel with these wheel lugs loose. We're going to lift this trailer. Remember, there's a lot of weight here, guys. So, you know, this thing weighs, you know, 800 pounds. So we got our... We got our jack here, we got our jack stand here. Hey, don't forget, that's a little safety precaution right there, is our jack stand, okay? Okay, so we got it raised up. We're gonna let it sit on the jack, okay? And then we got a jack stand in here as well in case it slips. And let's get this wheel off. I have in my truck, in my spare tire kit in my truck, I have a socket that fits those so that if i do have to change a tire on the road it's in my spare tire kit as we just said wouldn't it be horrible to drive away and look in the rearview mirror and see your machine sitting on the side of the highway and there's your weekend gone there's your weekend gone and maybe your ski by the time you get back and it happens there's not too many people that pull these things around all the time that haven't lost a tire or a bearing so get yourself I ran a socket and put it in your spare tire kit on your vehicle. There we go. So this trailer is a torsion suspension trailer. Um, a lot of trailers, some of our, our trailers, they, they got leaf springs, but this is a torsion bar suspension. So I've already loosened off this. So this is what we call bearing buddy. Um, the, the theory behind the bearing buddy is you, 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 um, Pump the grease into them and it fills up the whole hub and it actually pressurizes the hub so it keep, fills it full of grease and with positive pressure in the hub it's supposed to keep the water out. Do they work? Ah, I don't know. Um, and they're a real pain in the butt to get off once you get them on there. So anyway, so here we are. We got our we got our hub. We got our dust cap. That dust cap that's up there off. Um, we're going to try to clean out as much grease as we can. So we got our hub here. 
And then here is our cotter pin that holds on that fancy schmancy crown nut. Sometimes these can be a little bit of a pain in the butt, but we gotta straighten that out. And we'll straighten out this cotter key. pain in the butt but we don't want to break it off so mm -hmm. okay. there's our cotter key that cotter key holds that crown nut on so we can't have that that crown nut can't come loose on the highway normal usage anyway um, when these things get really bad and seize up, these crown nuts can actually just kind of burn right off. I've seen them that hot. So you guys that put your skis in the water in salt water, us guys up here in Canada, it's all fresh. I, you guys need to service these trailers a lot. You get salty water inside one of these things and it destroys very quickly. So there's our crown nut. There's a, our washer behind the crown nut. That washer doesn't come in the kit, so we need to save it. We can just plop it right up here, right, hon? Yep. Right where we know where it is. Right there. Clean it all off. We're going to replace that crown nut in the kit. And this hub will slide right off now. So we have an outer bearing. And then we have an inner bearing, which is behind this seal. So we're going to pull this seal. We're going to pull this. We're going to clean the hub. And then we have, this is called the spindle. Here, this right here, this surface right there is where your seal rides on. Do not mess that up. Make sure it's nice and clean because if you scratch that or scuff that, your grease is going to leak out and water is going to leak in when you back it in the water. So... So just for the record that this is actually not a bad hub. I would have normally just taken it apart and greased all the bearings. But since we're doing this video, we're going to rebuild the whole hub. So we're going to pull out the, the inner the inner and outer races. These ones here. So basically, I'm just going to get it in my vise. We're going to snug it up just a smidge. Get my big ass screwdriver down in here and get the edge, lip of the race and just knock it up. There's the inner race. We got a brand new one of those because we're going to put new bearings in it. Um, we don't want to put new bearings on old races. So we're going to we'll hook this here, snug it up like that. Get down inside there. You can see where I'm, I'm just going to catch a hold of the side of that race and we're going to knock it out. Side to side. There we go. The races are out. Okay. There's one, and there's the other one, inner and outer, and they're they're the same. So we're gonna grab a nice clean cloth here. We don't want any grit in here or anything like that. And we're gonna clean this all out. If I had some carb cleaner or um, something like that, I would spray that in, but I don't have any. So we're gonna do this the old-fashioned way. We're just gonna make sure these are all nice and clean. Okay, and now we have our new races. Nice brand new shiny race, brand new bearing. We're gonna take this race, we're gonna drop it up in there. So we got our new race, we got our race driver. We're gonna line that up nicely just like that. And we're gonna just gently tap that into the hub. Okay, so we got our race in there. We're gonna make sure that our race is bottom out on the lip it bottoms out on and that bearing is going to sit right in on that race just like that okay so now that was the inner race we're going to do do the outer race this one has to go in a long way feel that felt that bottom right out so it's in there. So there we go, guys. We have a new race on the inside. 
sorry, new race on the inside, new race on the outside. We've got them seated well in here. We didn't ding the bearing surface at all. We gotta be really careful you don't mar that. Look how nice and shiny and machine that is. So that hub has been rebuilt. Mind you, this hub is not all corroded and rotten and falling apart, so it's a lot easier. So um, I've seen bearings that are welded to the spindles. I've seen it all. So. Again, a PM service. This here I would have just taken all apart and re-greased all the bearings and reused everything. But since we're doing this video, we're putting all new. So there we go. There's our nice new hub. A nice shiny new hub anyway. So this bearing is going to sit on the back side right there. And then our seal is going to sit in front of it. That's the seal. So I'm going to show you guys now how to pack a wheel bearing. Ooh. So this is where... We get greasy, guys. Um, we're gonna put a big mitt full of, I got some all-purpose wheel bearing grease here. Use your, use your waterproof grease, tends to be a little thin. So basically take the grease, put it in the palm of your hand and mash your bearing into that grease. Keep mashing it in, pack it right into all, Those right grease? in between, yeah, right in between all the little bearings in there. We're gonna pack that grease into the bearing just like that. And we're gonna try to use up as much bearing grease as we can. And we know that bearing is very well packed. If somebody's got an easier way of doing this, I'd like to see it because this is messy work. So put gloves on. If I had gloves, I'd put gloves on. <laughs> so, okay. So that bearing is very well packed. You see the grease coming out there. Bingo, bango. Look at that. Sweet. It just sits in there sweet as pie. Actually, let's try to get a little bit more in there. Okay. Greasier the better. Gooier the better, I always say. Right? Yes. Right. Right. So we got a seal driver. Usually this will sit down inside that groove, but I don't my driver kit's not the right one. So we'll get there right there nice and centered. And we're just gonna we are not gonna beat the crap out of the seal. We're gonna make sure it's seated. And there we go. We gotta make sure it's not sitting against that bearing, which it's not, okay. And there we go. Good, okay, now we'll do the front one. We'll do the front bearing now. How's that sound, love? Sounds like a plan. Okay, so now that we got the back bearing all in, all packed and everything, we can make sure that this surface right here, I think we talked about that earlier, but is nice and clean. That's where your grease seal sits. And then we're gonna slide this hub on and there we go. Hub's in. Right. Now we're gonna come over here and we're gonna repack or we're gonna pack the front bearing. And again, let's get dirty job but someone's got to do it someone's got to do it and that someone is you we're making this video so that we don't have to pay other people to do it so okay pack the bearing get it right in there get pack that grease right down in between those rollers it is a dirty job you're not going to stay clean when you're dusting with this kind of stuff so we'll get that grease packed right in there like that Roll it around. That is a very well greased bearing. So we're going to take this bearing, get that hub nice and level there, and we'll slip this bearing over the shaft. And there we go. Look at that. That's it. That is it. We're going to put it back together now. Wow. Let me get the goo off my hands. Okay. So we know where our washer is because we placed it up here. We got to get this washer on here. Like that. We got our new crown nut. I'm going to save that old one, put it in my standby kit. Your just in case kit? My just in case kit. Make sure you got the right one. I think the one that came off of there was in better shape. There we go. Rolling, rolling, rolling. rolling. Keep the CDU rolling. Okay, so we got that nice and tight. We are gonna take this here. We're gonna take this and we're gonna take this crown nut and we're gonna snug her up good and tight until we feel a little bit of preload there. There we go, a little bit of preload. 
just like that and then we're gonna back it off just a smidge okay there's no play in this hub the wheel the hub spins free little bit of preload there keep everything nice and tight when every time we put a new anytime we put a new race in bearing in it's a good idea to tighten it a little bit tighter and then back it right off it pulls everything back in so again we're going to take this we're going to go a little tighter than we normally would like that and then we're going to back it off some just a little bit that pulls everything into position that feels like good preload to me it's not spinning around in circles really easy okay preload has how much pressure we're putting on the bearing so i think that's pretty good that feels good there's no grinding okay we're gonna get our i'm gonna put our cotter pin in here get it all the way through bend it like that so i can bend it out okay that pin there that cotter pin is very important guys don't uh don't try to don't try to run without it if you're missing it because that's going to keep your wheel on that's going to stop your wheel from passing you on the highway. Bend that cutter pin over and get a little tap in there, get it nice and flat so it's not rubbing on the back of our, of our bearing bunny. Okay, bearing buddies. I don't know, did we talk about bearing buddies already? Um, a little bit. Bearing buddies. So there's good and bad to bearing buddies. I like them, but I don't like them. So the idea with a bearing buddy is, is that they go in place of your dust cap on right here. And we tap them into place like that. Okay. Make sure nothing's rubbing on the inside, like that rubbing on that cotter pin, but it's not. It sounds good. Okay. So bearing buddies. I'm going to show you how a bearing buddy was supposed to work. We got our grease gun. Got a grease nipple in the middle of the bearing buddy. Pop it on there, and we're going to pump the bearing buddy full of grease. And if you watch, this spring here is going to preload with grease. Got a lot of grease because we pulled all the grease out of there. So they do hold a lot of grease. This is the bonus about a bearing buddy is that you can get a lot of that grease, nice grease in that hub. You see that spring loading up. There we go. It'll start squirting out when it's full. And I'm gonna call that full. See the grease is coming out the bottom here. That is a full bearing buddy. Okay, so the bearing buddy and that spring, that spring puts a positive pressure on the hub. The whole idea behind that is that if you have a positive pressure, you can't get water into the hub. I see water in hubs with bearing buddies all the time, but um, they're better than nothing, I guess. So you decide if you want to go with just a dust cap or a bearing buddy. I don't mind the bearing buddies, but I'm going to tell you, they're not easy to get off when you do to, to go to service your bearing. So anyway, on that note right there, that is a good smooth running hub. Feels like it's got a little bit of preload on it. Uh, no grinding, nice and smooth. So let's get this wheel back on. You can see why we did the seal on this one because this, uh, oh. this seal's leaking its grease. So, um, Hard not to with the bearing buddies. Expect some seepage when you got bearing buddies. And if you see if you don't have bearing buddies and you see this, then you've got a bad seal on the back of your hub. And chances are water's getting in. And again, you guys in the salt water, you don't want salt water in here because it'll mangle them up pretty fast. So if you go to service your bearings and pack your bearings and there's corrosion on that bearing, replace it. Because once it's rusted a little bit, there's no one doing that. And again, sock driving away from your machine on the side of the road, wouldn't it? <laughs> totally. Okay. So let's get this hub on. Easier said than done. There we go. So we're going to put a little bit of, um, you can use any C's. Can use rust inhibitor whatever you want right on those threads so that 
if we do get a flat tire on the side of the highway and you haven't had these off for a long time they won't be seized on with a little bit of maintenance on them All right. get these lugs on okay now they got these lugs trailer back on the ground on the floor come on okay get some weight on there okay so guys we're gonna torque these I'm not gonna tell you what the torque is I need you to go figure that out on your own because I'm not gonna be responsible for you breaking the stud so figure out what torque is on your trailer studs Good question to ask when you go to the trailer supply place to get your bearing kits, okay? So that is done. Retorque them, go for a spin around the block, retorque your, retorque your lugs. Um, this you should do once a year. Pull your bearings all apart, get all the water, get all the grease out, repack them. Honestly, it takes about a half an hour each side to do. Um, I replaced the bearings just because, because of this video. Those bearings were still good, but uh, I replaced them anyway, just to show you guys. So repack them once a year. If you want to get some bearing buddies, get some bearing buddies. It's a good way to keep supply of grease in there, but the grease will leak out the back. So thanks for coming along. Uh, I hope I taught you something, right, hon? Yep. It's all about teaching you guys something. Always a learning so, experience. Um, don't leave your trailers on the side of the road, guys, because you didn't do some PM. So again, thanks for following.